Assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Monday's Inspiration with Ustaza Zainab Ansari. Um, just a reflection in terms of looking at our current situation and um, looking at a business practice of doing a SWOT analysis. And the SWOT analysis is looking at what is it that I can control and what is it that I can't control. So what I can control are uh, the strength and the weaknesses in a situation. And what I can't control are the opportunities and threats. And so looking at our, our current pandemic and our current situation, um, I suggest that we all do a SWOT analysis. What is it that I have that is a strength in this situation? And what is it that I have as a weakness? And the idea of the SWOT analysis is to maximize on the strength and minimize the weakness or moving the weakness into a strength. So um, I've started doing that and I encourage each and every one of us uh, to put your thoughts down on paper or on, on, on your laptop or computer and look at how can you maximize the strength that you have right now uh, during this pandemic and what are the weaknesses and what can you do to move the weaknesses in, into strength. So today, part of my strength is lis listening to the inspirations of the morning. And we are so honored to have Ustaza Zainab Ansari uh, to be with us this morning. Zainab, we look forward to hearing your inspiration. Thank you so much, Mr. Sameh. I really appreciate it. Glad to be here. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. So I begin in the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful, with uh, praising God and invoking God's peace upon Prophet Muhammad. And, you know, I wanted to actually continue from some reflections I had shared last week in that um, for, for, for Muslims who are praying five times a day, for example, there's, there's this constant <clears throat> invocation of God. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, um, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy, it's often translated. And one of the things that really struck me, as I mentioned last time, was I actually thought, well, let me count, let me actually count the number of times that that I'm actually saying this phrase throughout the day, because I'd actually not even thought about counting it. Because again, it can sometimes become something that's almost sort of, um, we default to it, right? It's almost sort of formulaic in a sense, because it's part of a kind of a larger uh, format of prayer. So when I did the, the math last week, I got up to about 50. And then I did the math again, and I said, okay, this is interesting. Now it's like upwards of 60. So the last count I actually got was that it was possible just in the format of the five times daily prayers to invoke God's name uh, upwards of 60 times, or, or I should say specifically to invoke those attributes of God, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the merciful, the compassionate, upwards of 60 times a day, which to me is, is just something really remarkable in that we have, being at home, right, generally speaking, we find ourselves having a lot more time on our hands and trying to figure out ways to kind of be productive. Now, of course, for those of you who are working from home, you might already have a set schedule, but it might it may be the case where you're having to kind of create a schedule. It may be the case where, you know, maybe you're homeschooling your children, maybe you're taking care of, uh, you know, of your parents or relatives. So my advice is to really actually take those moments uh, where you can kind of step away from those other responsibilities and specifically those moments of prayer to really kind of deeply reflect and actually begin your reflection with, with the consideration of why those two particular attributes or the Asma al-Husna, the beautiful names of God, are being invoked throughout the day, again, upwards of 60 times. Again, to me, that was really um, a remarkable fact. And considering the fact that there are other attributes of God, right, up to 99 that scholars have counted, some have said that that number 99 is actually not exhaustive of all the attributes of God that are out there. But generally, the ones that we learn um, that we see in books are, 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 are 99 names. And what's so fascinating about the 99 names of God and the reason why I wanted to make some of these names uh, the, the topic of my morning reflection is because it, generally the names uh, have kind of two broad connotations. There are the names that basically, um, the names of Jalal, and these are names that we invoke or call upon that evoke 
attributes of majesty and grandeur and power and awe. So again, that's, those are the attributes of Jalal, and that is Jalal is J-A-L-A-L. But then you have another set of attributes that when we invoke, i.e. when we supplicate God by those names, those attributes evoke or bring up or bring to mind attributes of Jamal, and Jamal is spelled J-A-M-A-L, attributes of Rahman and Ar-Rahim specifically fit within the attributes of Jamal. So here we are again, multiple times per day within our prayer, invoking these attributes of beauty. And the attributes of beauty are, are really significant in the sense that they counterbalance those attributes of majesty and grandeur. And they remind us of the beauty of God. They remind us of the, the transcendence of God. But what, what's so interesting is that in that transcendence, we are reminded through God's attributes of beauty, how eminently close God is to us. And this is very significant. One of the things that our beloved prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, um, teaches is that uh, we are to worship God, right? This is one of the instructions from the prophet Muhammad, um, to worship God as if we see him, because even though we do not see him, surely he sees us. And one of the ways of kind of one of the ways of kind of getting at this this quality of the closeness um, of God is through invoking particular names again, Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim being the foremost of them. Because every time we remind ourselves that God is loving and compassionate and merciful and 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 protective and forgiving, again it. It, it connotes a certain type of nearness and closeness, which I think is very important for us, especially during, you know, these trying times where, again, we're finding ourselves not just with schedules that have been um, sort of inverted, not just having that interruption or that, or that disruption even of our normal uh, routine, right? But also finding ourselves sort of, um, you know, challenged with kind of, emotions, a lot of emotions about how this feels to stay at home and how it feels to not have the normal Ramadan we were anticipating, or how it just feels to not even be able to go out and run errands and go to the typical places that we that we all, we all like to go to. So this is why I think it is really important that we sit down for a moment and really reflect on why we actually call upon Allah Ta'ala, God the Most Exalted, as Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. And, and, and also think about Rahma, mercy, how it is all-encompassing. One of the things that we learn about these attributes, right, when we read about them and study about them, is that they encompass all of God's creatures, right? whether we are talking about believers or unbelievers, whether we are talking about human beings, whether we are talking about sort of other aspects of the natural world, that, that rahmah is that compassion and mercy is all encompassing. And one of the things that, that, that God actually says of himself is that, um, uh, so basically that God's, uh, that, that, that God's rahmah, um, encompasses every single thing. And also God says of himself that his, his mercy outstrips his wrath. And we have to constantly remind ourselves, right? Especially like when we, when we see situations and it's hard to maybe immediately kind of glean or understand in those situations, what is the immediate sort of wisdom or takeaway, right? To always remind ourselves of that point that, that God's compassion always supersedes and, out, and outstrips his, his wrath. And again, rahma coming from the term for the, the womb of the mother, raham, as I mentioned last time, right? We always have certain connotations when, when we think of the mother and we think about sort of the loving nature of the mother and the protection and the, the sustenance and the nourishment that, you know, that the baby finds in the womb. So this is what I kind of wanted to share with everybody this morning in terms of um, my reflections. Again, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim and what those mercies actually mean. And to be able to, one of the things about these attributes of Jamal, of beauty, is that they, they really challenge us to not just locate God's help and love and assistance and mercy in 
the, you know, in the larger things, but also in those smaller things. And those smaller things that we often don't really even think about that we take for granted. You know, again, the ability to get up in the morning and to just kind of go about our normal morning routine, right? To find the strength to do that. Um, you know, when we think about, and I could go on and on about this, I'm probably close to the end of my time, but there are, there are, there are, as there are, you know, as the physicians know, there are so many processes that actually take place in the human body, right? That we don't even have to think about because these processes just happen, right? And these things just work. I think about the fact that when we get up in the morning, this is the, the last thing I'll say about this, that, um, when we get up in the morning, that being able to actually um, get out of bed and stand up and have that sense of balance after we've been kind of lying down all evening, how remarkable that is. And so much of that, like the, the bodies, it's called the, 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 um, the, uh, the proprioceptive system, I believe, you know, it actually, uh, it actually goes to the inner ear, that there's a sense of balance that we actually get from our inner ear. Again, this is not something that we tend to really think about, right? We just assume that it's working and functioning. And how subtle is that, that this sense of balance, being able to find our actual physical location in the world as we get up, as we go about the day, a lot of it goes back to that inner ear system. Again, evidence of Allah Ta'ala's God's mercy and love and compassion for us. Again, in those small ways that we tend not to even think about. So thank you so much. I really appreciate being here. Professor Zainab, thank you so much for starting us off with a beautiful, beautiful inspiration and to remember that God's love is all over and we have to remember that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, hope that you uh, join our YouTube channel and uh, you will be able to watch all the morning inspirations. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Jazakum al khair. Assalamu alaikum.